And so another thing we're doing, you know, aside from doing these experiments, is like breaking down misconceptions. On the uh, second parabolic flight I did on the zero G plane, I was in charge of the mobility impairment uh, experiments that we were doing. And one of the things that suborbital spaceflight companies are concerned about is whether people with physical or visual disabilities can get back in their seat before um, gravity returns, which, if you don't have the data, seems like a horribly scary thing. And so we built analogous seats for the Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin uh, spacecraft in the zero-G plane, and we did ingress and egress with people with visual and uh, mobility impairments with five-point harnesses and things like that. And to my knowledge, um, I think we had something like 100% success rate with that. And so if there's no data, there's no information awareness to support things, stuff that shouldn't be an issue seems like a big, scary monster. And so the more we can uh, figure that out and move forward and figure out how maybe people with disabilities are better in space than people without disabilities. If you're a double amputee, do your lower prosthetics need to be legs? What if you had another set of hands, right? And, uh, you know, it's not ethical to, to add other hands to people with all four limbs. And so, um, you know, it's, it's things like that we can think about in terms of, like, what might be a disability on Earth that is not a disability in space? I like to joke that, you know, 5,000 years ago, if we decided that ramps were cooler than stairs, my life would be a lot easier. Um, but here we are. And so, you know, taking that frame of reference and the fact that we are still at the very beginning of designing what human spaceflight will look like for the rest of humanity um, for millennia to come, let's figure out ways to make it so that um, when we go there, everybody can go there.